Well, g'day. So Jen and I uh, got up early this morning and came for a two and a half hour bus ride. Um, we left Kaohsiung and came down to uh, Kending again. Um, we came down here uh, a little while back, a month and a half ago sort of thing. Um, and uh, we didn't get to see everything that we wanted. So we thought we would uh, keep on going. Uh, there's our new bike here. Uh, this one here is called Gavina in a nod to our uh, friend Gavin, who sent us a message on YouTube and said, the next bike that you get, can you please call it Gavina after me? So that's what we did. Um, we've just stopped in the town of Henchong and uh, we're gonna have a look at the old Henchong gates, the city wall gates here. All right, come with us, have a look. So here's the, uh, the old city gate. Uh, it's currently in the middle of a roundabout. We'll step back because of the bus. All right, the bus is clear. So yeah, this is the old city gate. And uh, we're gonna try and cross the road safely here and go and have a look at it. This here is the south gate. There are four of them that match the directions, north, south, west, and east. And they were built in 1875. Um, there has been some reconstruction work done on it uh, because of a large earthquake that happened. Uh, quite a number of years ago, um, but yeah, it's been here for quite a long time. Passing through and under the gate here. We would currently be heading out of the city through the south gate. Over here. This concrete and stone that you can see here is part of the old city walls. And uh, I know it's a lot lower than what uh, it would have been then, but uh, yeah. So these are the old city walls here that would go round the city. We're gonna keep going and see what else we can see here. We just came up the road just a little bit further and uh, you can see this is the what direction would that be? East. This is the east gate and walls that you can see stretching down. Nice little park just there. But yes, this is the east gate. We've just arrived at a place called the Chuho Special Scenic Area. And uh, we're here to see a thing called Fire from Earth. Um, it would be better at night time because you'll probably be able to see the fire better, but we'll go and have a look and see what we can see. Gives you an indication of what it looks like there. Heading off down the steps down here into the valley. And uh, hopefully what we can see is good. Thankfully, there's quite a lot of shade as we're walking down here, which is good because it is really hot and bitey in the sun. So we've got to uh, where we're going and it's probably going to be a little bit hard to see. Um, this area here is made up of a lot of mudstone, like we've seen back up in different parts of Gaozhang. Uh, and there's lots of fissures that open up um, and there's a lot of natural gas that is uh, below us. Um, this gas has caught a light in this area here and is just continually burning straight up from the ground. You can see the fire and the flames that are just continually going. And I know you can't smell it, but it is Hmm, I don't know what it smells like. It doesn't really smell like natural gas or anything. Well, not gas out of the stove or the barbecue or anything like that. But it's not really stinky or anything, so well, I'm not sure. Jen and I have come up the road a bit further on Govina, and we've just parked him and we've come to the Thai Power Exhibition. Um, this is the exhibition from the uh, Taiwan Electricity Company. 
Um, you can see a, a love sign just here. Jen was just saying that she doesn't know what the fascination here in Taiwan is with the word love. It seems like everywhere you go, there's some sort of a love sign. Um, over the back there, I'll just move out of Jen's way. Um, you might be able to see those concrete domes. Uh, that is the southern nuclear power plant here in Taiwan. So that's the nuclear power plant there. And just here as well, they have a number of wind generators. Uh, the big wind, wind, uh, big windmill type things that are generating electricity. It's usually quite breezy here. And uh, they've got uh, plenty of breeze to turn them. So we've just signed in here at the Thai Power exhibit. Going up the, uh, the escalator. If nothing else, it's indoors and it's air conditioned, which is beautiful. Just had to sign in with our name and phone number and uh, verify that we've been here in Taiwan for longer than two weeks and uh, uh, that we're not in quarantine or anything like that. Thankfully, we didn't need to show a passport because my passport was taken by the scooter hire until we returned the scooter. So, anyway, let's go and check it out. I'm assuming most of this will be in Mandarin, but uh, that's okay. We'll see what we can work out. Inside here we see some of the forerunners of science and electricity. William Gilbert, Ben Franklin, Alessandro Volta, Andre Marie Ampere, George Simon Ohm, James Prescott, Jewel, and a few others here. There are a few interactive displays. I turn this. Oh, look, I made light. And the light goes off. If I turn it again, the light comes on. Works both ways. How about that? So we went through the exhibition and it wasn't the best thing in the world, but it did kill some time. Um, it wasn't the best, mainly because everything was in Mandarin and we uh, can't read it or speak it, so... Anyway, we've just come out the back of the building here and there's a large 50 kilowatt solar installation. And then there's one of the, uh, the wind, or two of the wind turbines at the back there, that, uh, showing different sources of energy. This one's quite interesting in how it's shaped. I quite liked it. We have just uh, driven around and come up to a place called Guan Chan. And uh, we are coming up here for sunset. We have both seen and read about the place before. And uh, this is the path that comes up. The sign here says that this is one of the world's top 12 most superb sunset spots as voted by CNN. So we are going to settle ourselves in. We've got some food and some water and uh, it's about an hour or so till sunset. So we'll go and find our spot and go. So we've just come in and uh, paid. It's uh, $60 per person, $3 per person. And uh, we will make our way in and find a spot and uh, and check the place out. The ocean goes forever. There's a little bit of shade in a few spots. Beautiful tended gardens all through here. I was just saying to Jen, I knew it was a nice sunset spot and I thought it was just a point, uh, like a spot that you come to for the sunset. I didn't realize there was a big park up the top here and uh, that you had to pay to come in or anything. But yeah, it's lovely up here. Sun setting through the trees over there. 
Jen's still covered head to toe, even though she's in the shade. She must be dying of the heat, poor thing. But she can take her hood off and she can drop down her buff and everything, but uh, well. Well, sunset has happened. I was too busy taking photos to do any video. Um, but yeah, sunset has happened. It was pretty amazing and majestic. As you would expect from one of the top 12 sunset points in the world. Uh, the clouds over here. Oh, you got a bit of lightning there. So, pretty cool. We might need to go before we get wet. Anyway, the place is now deserted again. And uh, we're going to be heading off shortly too. Back down the hill now. There's Gavina standing patiently waiting for us. We'll put our bits and pieces in the... Uh, in the boot and uh, make our way home. Oh, it's a bit dark, isn't it? Oh well. So we decided to drop in on the way back to uh, have a look at the, uh, the fire from Earth again. And you can see it much better in the evening. It's, uh, the ground is all on fire there and there's lots of little fires spread all around it. It's very, very cool. You can see the little tongues of flame everywhere on the ground where the gas is coming out. And then some of the larger spots. It looks like a campfire, but there's no wood burning. Well, we just made it back to our um, B and B and uh, we're both had it. Oh, oh, we both had it. There's Jen, had it over there. And we just went out to the uh, street markets outside and bought some dinner. We're gonna eat that. It's about eight o'clock. We're just gonna call it a night for tonight and uh, we will talk to you guys again sometime soon. Well, probably tomorrow. All right, catch ya. <laughs>